So now we will advancing in the mechanism of hearing topics and now we will proceed to internal ear. What are the physiology and anatomical points which is necessary so that you can understand the auditory pathway and all things in detail. And now after this video, we will go to core auditory pathway. So before that, let's see about internal ear. There are questions in the end which you need to answer in comments. For notes, you can visit the link and do not forget to subscribe. So guys, we have seen the, you know, external ear, not much significance, middle ear we have saw in the previous video. Now this is what we need to think about internal ear. So let's magnify and see what are the parts of internal ear. It may look complex or so many names are there at first vision, but it is very easy. So let's begin and we will see what all these diagrams signify. So basically what is inner ear? Okay. So inner ear has got two parts. You can see here one is your bony labyrinth and one part which is shaded with purple is membranous labyrinth. Okay. So you can see that basically this is your inner ear and in that you have outer bony labyrinth because you know your ear is lodged into the temporal bone. Okay. So the bony labyrinth is the outer part and the membranous labyrinth is the inner part. Okay. This blue one is the inner part. Now, how we will divide it? Basically, inner ears has bony labyrinth, which is a series of channel in your temporal bone, which encloses membranous labyrinth. Is that okay? Now, you have to study in detail about membranous labyrinth only. Okay, guys. So, what is membranous labyrinth? I should say membranous labyrinth has got further parts. What are those parts? Basically, it has got three semicircular canals. Then it has got a vestibule, which is nothing but your utricle and secule combined and then there is cochlea okay so what are these let me show you the diagram so these are the semicircular canal i hope you know them very well that there are three number perpendicular to each other okay and now they are communicating with your vestibule and vestibule is further divided into utricle and secule okay so although these part are very important with respect to inner ear but they have none not much relation with audition okay they are basically a part of your vestibular apparatus so we need not to go in that much detail regarding these parts right now what you should focus on is this snail shaped part and this is your cochlea okay guys so always remember si simplify the things wherever you need okay right now don't go in vestibule right now just focus semicircular canal done vestibule done now you are come now you are here on cochlea okay so what is cochlea cochlea is a coiled tube okay and it is 35 millimeter long and it you can see that they are are basically two to three turns that cochlea takes. Now we will further dissect cochlea that okay what is cochlea how it is made basically okay. So now cochlea will have two membrane Reissner's and basilar membrane. Now what is this thing this is I have you know uh, amplified this particular area of cochlea guys okay. Right now whatever is happening above we don't care right now we focusing on cochlea. So this is your cochlea and in cochlea you have Reissner's membrane and then you have this basilar membrane so two membrane but three compartment so these three compartments are scala vestibuli media and then tympani okay now these vestibuli and tympani are you know shaded in the same color media is shaded in a different color why let's see so basically you have got cochlea cochlea has two membrane reissner's and basilar reissner's and basilar divided into three compartment vestibuli media tympani and the vestibuli and tympani have perilymph in them whereas your scala media has endolymph in them okay one thing this needs to be very clear to you which parts of ear contains perilymph which part contains endolymph is that okay guys so this is all you need to know right now now what is the thing basically now the scala vestibuli okay this is your scala vestibuli we have already talked in our middle ear video that how you have seen here oval window and round window and now they just want to say that whenever you will think of scala vestibuli so at the base of cochlea when you are approaching towards middle ear i should say so it will ends at oval window okay v for vestibuli v for oval window whereas your scala tympani will end at round window okay so right now this can't be seen in this diagram but if you see in the bigger picture then you can realize that yes here it is oval window then here it is round window okay so you are done with this part now we will focus on this in detail scala media so you have to always dissect in ear that what is important to you right now okay so right now most important part is scala media why because it has the receptor of hearing organ of corti okay guys so now we will see this structure 
So now what happens first of all if you see the location of the organ of Cotai. So where is the location? You can see that this is okay basilar membrane and from here you can see yes there are some structures which are particularly forming organ of Cotai and this is all extending into scala media. So now let's read the text regarding it. So the receptor of hearing that is your organ of Cotai its location is on the basilar membrane and from the basilar membrane it is covering entire cochlea I should say from the apex to the base of cochlea okay so on the entire basilar membrane you can say you have this organ of Cotai now what happens is basically on the basilar membrane two rods are present which are called as rods of Cotai so now here is your membrane and you have formed two rods so the space between two rods will be called as tunnel so this is the thing you should first of all be clear of that if I say this so you can see this is your tunnel hai na? this is your tunnel and how this tunnel is being formed basically there must have been rods of cotai so I should you know dissect things more but right now rods are not uh, labeled here so you might face some problem but you can see that we have formed this tunnel so tunnel will only be formed when this is your rod 1 and this is your rod 2 so outer and inner rod you can say that also but all in all this will form tunnel in between so now this is the thing which we need to know that okay uh, there is a basilar membrane and on that you have rods rods will have tunnel in between okay now the thing is that inside the now you have one inner rod and you have outer rod as i have already told you so now inner rod will have on its side inner hair cell and the outer rod will have on its side outer hair cell okay so this is the thing which you need to know that basically medial to inner rod will be inner hair cell hai na? and outer rod ke respect mein laterally will be outer hair cells now inner hair cells as you can see in this diagram are just one single hair row whereas outer hair cells are three to four in rows so single row of inner hair cells totally number need not to be remembered just i have written for your knowledge outer hair cells will have three to four rows okay now they are basically supported by more you know complexity of cells so inner hair cells are supported by inner phalangeal cells and outer hair cells are supported by outer phalangeal and outer phalangeal are also called as deter cells okay so these there are just so many uh, you know terms in this see if you see this deter cell so although they might not be that significant at a very uh, you know gross stage but it's just like to make things complex you can note them okay so if i say that this is your outer hair cells so they are supported by outer phalangeal cell deter cell on the similar note you will also get inner hair cell supported by inner phalangeal cells now why are we talking so much of organ of corti we will see that okay now what happens is from your inner hair cell and outer hair cell there is a formation of cilia which is called as stereocilia obviously this is your hair so from upper surface cilia will project this is called as stereocilia this will pass through reticular lamina which is a tough membrane and then gradually to tectorial membrane now what is this all these things see this is your inner you know hair cell this is outer hair cell you can see stereocilia and now they will pass through first of all there will be a layer which is not labeled which is reticular lamina and then you will have you know tectorial membrane so all in all tectorial membrane is the limit reticular lamina and then tectorial membrane okay guys so this is all the things this is the tectorial membrane so this is the same diagram which we have magnified there and it's nothing to be worried about okay now what are these things these are basically stria vesicularis which are responsible for endolymph perilymph production or whatsoever but that is core anatomical topic i don't need to go in that detail right now this is important for physiological basis now the next thing which you must be noticing is that you can see this inner hair cells and you can see that there are cochlear nerve and it is basically forming spiral ganglion so what is that now we will see that part okay guys so basically it is the innervation of organ of corti so the afferent innervation is by the cochlear division of eighth nerve okay so these fibers are have you know they have their cell bodies in the spiral ganglion so you know that afferent innervation is by cochlear nerve okay guys these things are important in ordinary pathway we will see that okay now you know efferent cholinergic fibers so now efferent cholinergic fibers are basically arising from both ipsilateral as well as contralateral opposite and same side superior olivary nucleus this is all you need to know very well okay superior olivary nucleus and then they form a olivo cochlear bundle this is just the name don't worry and then they descend they will join seventh nerve and they will end around the basis of outer hair cells 
So you saw the afferent innervation via the cochlear nerve and then you saw the you know efferent innervation and they will join the seventh nerve and will end around that the outer hair cells. So now what are their function how these inhibit the afferent fibers we will see more detail in auditory pathway but this is what I needed to tell you regarding physiology and anatomy. So now why are we discussing so much about inner and outer hair cells? Inner hair cells are primary sensory cell. They will basically detect also. They will detect the sound. They will generate action potential in your auditory nerves. So sound detection is the role of inner hair cells and they will also help in fine auditory discrimination. Okay. Whereas outer hair cells are also responsible for sound detection, but they are more responsible for improving the amplitude and clarity of sound. So this is all in all. It's nothing much to worry, I guess. You just study external ear, you study middle ear, main thing impedance matching and uh, that your uh, uh, augment uh, attenuation, sorry. And then you study the internal ear. In internal ear, you study these particular diagrams and things become easy gradually. Just don't forget these charts, the matter of classification. And we are done with internal ear anatomy physiology re re uh, required for your auditory mechanism. So the question very easy. You have to just answer that scala media contains perilim for endolim. Okay. So answer below in comments. Keep learning. Thank you. Stay safe. Stay healthy.